family, friends, and fans. Welcome back to Carmelitely, the spooky edition. All right, fine. I'm a cornball. Listen, I'm sorry that I didn't make it in time for Halloween. Well, actually, I'm just making it. Uh, we're going to get right into this Halloween junk journal tutorial. I started the... Um, so just so you know, the cover was an envelope, those like bubble wrap envelopes. And I cut a flap open because I wanted a door and I found a scrap of wood in my wood scrap pile <laughs> and um, thought it would be perfect. So I used my double sided tape. You guys remember this from a 99 cents haul. If you haven't watched the video, check it out. Um, and also in this video, look out for <clears throat> more tools from that 99 cents haul. So I took out the backing from the double-sided tape and look how juicy it is. And I'm going to apply it onto the flap. And look at that. Perfect. And since the wood is heavier than, obviously, the flap, it just kind of plops. <laughs> it just, like, plops closed, almost like there's a magnet there, but there isn't. I uh, got to sand that wood down and prep it. And I also uh, primed the wood with some gesso. I primed the, um, I also primed the envelope just in certain areas where there was like lettering and um, logos and that kind of thing. I didn't want that to show through on the cover of the journal. But I didn't mind showing off some of the orange from the envelope and in the inside part I'll showcase the orange even more that's that's what I wanted so I'm happy with that so we're gonna get to our pages and our pages for this are going to be our six by nine envelopes and our paper bags I did cut off the top of the paper bag to match the envelope perfectly um, and I also scored the brown paper bag on the side with the flap this is what I mean by flap on the side with the flap I scored it I guess it was like it ended up being like about an inch maybe even an inch and change um, maybe like an inch yeah <clears throat> that I scored but it was to create a big enough um, a big enough flap for the um, uh, to secure on top of the envelope to make a great sturdy page and um, there these are all prepped and here I attached this one because I wanted you to see how it looks and also wanted you to see that um, when you flip it over the flap that is left behind that has a natural slit with the brown paper bag and what I did was I grabbed my craft knife and I cut the slit that part in the bottom open so that it allows us to just open that flap flat I keep saying flap I don't know what <laughs> but that's so that you see if you applied something like this you can open and close so it's like a hinge I also cut these ends uh, diagonally and I actually just wanted to there really was no reason to um, but that's what I wanted to do and so now it's ready to be attached with the next flap and that's and that's basically what I did I would just keep attaching everything um, flap to flap but in signatures so there's only two envelopes per two um yes two envelopes per signature and I did three signatures so two of each for each signature so there's one envelope one brown paper bag second envelope second brown paper bag and that signature is done then there's the next signature see one envelope one brown paper bag <clears throat> one envelope one brown paper bag and that's um that's how I did the signatures and these are great because each page is a pocket 
you know so you really have so much storage um in here so it's really cool i then took some scrap paper uh um measured it so that i could still showcase the brown paper bag a little bit and the envelope um and so each signature has one or two of these. I didn't want to cover all the brown paper bags, but I did it to some. And so um, for all the envelopes, at the end of the envelope, I sewed on these um, different types of fabrics and lace and all these things. Yes, I sew in the dark. <laughs> Sometimes I like to sew in the dark. And since the machine has a light, I could care less. But... Um, for those of you who wanted to know if you could sew on paper and all these things, I actually have the Brother XR3340 uh, from, and um, for those of you who've, who've watched my other sewing uh, videos, um, this one is for you so that you can see uh, what you can do with your brother. Another thing you can do with the sewing machine, well, any sewing machine, not just the brother. But um, another thing you can do is, so this is, I'm showing you guys an alternative on how you guys can do your signatures. And um, here I have the flap on the side for the brown paper bag, um, just the same. And what we're going to do here, we're going to attach it, not with double-sided tape, we're going to actually attach it with our sewing machines. And, um, so I kind of just folded the corner, the flap over, and then you want to make sure that you divide this flap into two. You do not want to sew both flaps. And now we're just going to make sure everything is nice and even. Um, I do take my time a little bit. I am not a pro when it comes to sewing. Uh, and that's the reason why I try to be even more meticulous. So we're going to align the envelope with the brown paper bag to make certain that they're straight and lined up. And hopefully start sewing. <laughs> My apologies that the first line was not caught on camera, so I'm now sewing one uh, right on the side of that one so that you guys can see um, how smooth and easy. This thread is an upholstery thread. It's like a super strong upholstery thread, but I like to sew with it, and uh, it just makes everything nice and sturdy. So... Um, show you guys how that came out it's not super straight but look how nice and secure no tears and we're gonna turn it on the we're gonna turn it around so that you can see on the back side no tears however in all fairness I was supposed to be um, I was supposed to change my settings my settings should have um, been a longer stitch so I should have gone maximum five stitches or even four because when you're working with paper it's much better to it's safer so that the paper doesn't tear to use a longer stitch so there's one signature and I did it with stitching instead of the double-sided tape and I'll be honest with you it's so much faster it's way faster attaching the pages with your sewing machine than it is with anything else I promise you I've tried it and I've clocked it it's super fast so just for this Halloween um, video I wanted to add this is also from the 99 cents haul this little happy uh, happy um, sorry trick-or-treat napkin I wanted to attach it as well onto the um, brown paper bag with the sewing machine. I realized, though, in the video, I could I saw myself analyzing. I realized that I didn't want the opening of the napkin on the left side 
because I wanted to stitch it so that it could create a pocket. So thankfully I realized that before sewing it and um, gonna get right into sewing this. Now, like I said, I am a beginner. Sometimes my stitches are straight, sometimes they're not. In this case, it really went off on the side <laughs> and um, so you're going to be able to see that and see sometimes a straight stitch is not necessary like for a Halloween thing you kind of want a messy look but in this case even though I would like a messy look the bottom part of the napkin is not as secure as the top because the stitching started going off onto the side and what that's going to do is it's going to create an easy opening and you don't want that so I am going to correct that so that um, the stitching is more secure on the napkin and I'm also going to close off the bottom part of the napkin as well because we want to make the napkin um, a pocket So here we go, gonna sew that bottom part of the tissue so it can be sealed off and then you can actually put stuff into that um, tissue pocket as well. I wouldn't put anything heavy, but <clears throat> you can put little scraps and things in there. Definitely you could put heavy duty stuff in the 6x9 envelope. That one's built to last. See that tear in the bottom? That's because I didn't sew well enough um, and so that has to get fixed. I'm just going to fix it from the midway point where I saw that I kind of started leaning over to the right. <laughs> so hopefully I can stay in the middle. I, because I have a weird setup with my camera right now, so my hands are not as like steady. So that looks a lot better. It's going right down the middle, which is what we want to secure that edge. You never want to sew too close to the edge because then um, your seam allowance is shot. So there's a signature. Um, I didn't use this exact signature in my book, but just to show you guys that you can use um, your sewing machine to create the signatures, and it's a lot easier. So now back to our cover. Um, sorry that I have not shown the step-by-step -step process for the door. I added some wooden tiles. And I've already started um, acrylic painting. I've been using water and acrylic paint and um, just trying to get the base colors that I want in the um, on the door and on the cover. It's slowly transforming. <laughs> I got a huge mess on the uh, on the desk there, but slowly transforming um, here I have um, this is actually just the fiber fill that I use for my dolls you know what you the stuffing that you could use for pillows and that kind of thing and I just kind of stretched it out and put it there because I didn't have any uh, anything else I'm fresh out of cheesecloth and fresh out of a lot of things so that is what I decided to use Sorry, but you cannot see what's behind the door. I use that button as a doorknob. And um, actually with this mounting tape, I did not get this from the 99 cent store, by the way. <laughs> I think I got this at Walgreens. But with this mounting tape, I just took a tiny piece and I put it behind the doorknob just to give it that 3D um, effect and that mounting tape is really great just for that um, I mean for just that is uh, making things look 3d so here you'll see a familiar fabric this is the same fabric that I used in the coffee and tea dyeing experiment um, for the coffee 
but um yeah that's a recycled shirt and i used it as the lining for the front and back of the book cover and i like i said wanted to preserve that orange from the envelope so it's definitely preserved on the inside and this is the back now these are the signatures i'm not going to reveal what's inside just yet but these are the three signatures and they fit perfectly into our book cover and um also by the way those signatures were joined together um in the middle each signature was joined together with the sewing machine just wanted to state that so i am pushing some holes into this i already i did three lines as a diagram they're not perfectly aligned but they're as good as it gets this is the upholstery um thread that i was telling you guys about i got this at michael's and um it's lasted me a while and i use it for a lot of different things but this is how i make it it's a little slippery and so sorry my hands have like so much paint and ink on them it's crazy my nail polish was all crazy so sorry about that but um this is the, i take a glue stick and i just put it along the thread i don't know if other people have done this or if other people do this but this is um something that i kind of just uh, while working on journals and stuff just thought would be a great way to kind of make it feel like wax um someone uh online had mentioned that they use like a waxed thread and i'm like i don't have wax thread <laughs> but this is a cool way to create it and it gives the thread a lot of substance i feel like it makes the thread even more strong and more secure and um i swear by this so and you can just make you can make it as waxy as you want i usually put like three or four coats and and then i'm ready to add my signatures with the thread into through each hole we kind of start through the middle and um, work our way down and then back up and then back to the middle but there's so many videos on that and that's how i learned was with watching the videos so you'll see so there's my first signature now i'm gonna put my second one there's the first one from the outside you can see the thread and I put it double so I do it I thread it twice and um, so there's like four threads there because I double it and then I pass it through twice so the second one is in yay and i did these corners um there's an awesome uh, i'm gonna put the link in the description i'm gonna put a couple of different links um so you can see how i was able to do my own corners and it's very versatile once you learn the formula you can kind of do your own thing and make it unique um but it was a very helpful video so here um this is also from my 99 cent store haul these cute little mini um uh, clothes pins but i was having a hard time with the holding the camera and doing this so i have my daughter here uh helping me to put these little push pins on my daughter dolly she's um putting those pieces there for me
so that ghost is not permanent. <laughs> um, so I mod podged the uh, entire cover except for the door. That bobbin that you saw me unwinding on, that bobbin was from like a long, long, long time ago. My mom had it and um, it's an old one and I just used it as the, um, the closure. Those are the corners that you saw drawing earlier and they have the same button as the door. I preserved the um, beautiful orange in the inside with the uh, from the envelope. There's the doily from the 99 cents haul that I promised I would paint black, and I did. Used some burlap for this pocket, and I stenciled that bike. And on the right, you see um, the index card from the coffee die and the coaster from the 99 cents haul. Also, um, everything was sewn on with the machine with my sewing machine. All that lace on the side was sewn on, and um, more of those index cards, a book page as a pocket, that tag with some lace on it. And if you notice, there's not a lot of things that actually say Halloween on here. I just found things lying around that um, kind of have, if all put to, if put together well, they'll have a spooky kind of vibe. And as you can see, none of those Halloween things are permanent. You can take those out uh, when it's not Halloween if you wanted to still have like that spooky concept, but not the Halloween like label on it, and still have it maybe lying around or whatever. And um, this I liked. Um, I put that brown paper bag as a pocket and look how it opens up. <laughs> I kind of like that a lot. And um, there's the fabric again and it kind of looks like a like a bowl or like a like a pot. And that looks like a witch's bag or like something like for a witch. And again, you see each end um, has a, uh, there's another index card. Each end has a strip of fabric on the, to the right of it. There's a cool pocket. And these are scraps. I really haven't bought much fabric for my crafts. I just recycle um, things that we want to throw out. This card is cute. Look, it looks like a peeking ghost. Because I put the two black <laughs> dots. That one was cute and fun. The tag looked like a little ghost. Oh, I love those doilies black. They look really nice. I mean, not for a spooky thing, but like for something else, I think they look nice. And there is the clothes line with those clothes pins. I painted the pins and that was fun. There's another coaster there. And everything can be, most things can be removed. Sorry that I'm a little nasally again. Um, this time I think it's allergies, but. <laughs> There's another fabric pocket, the lace on the side. Some more cards. And now this scrap paper actually already came with those red dots and it's funny because I wondered what would I do with it until this project came along and I was like ah oh, that's what I'm gonna do with it because I really can't see myself using that for anything else <laughs> so and there are the paper clips those striped paper clips from our 99 cents haul and they come in very handy to hold tags and pictures and different things remember these are all this is your journal so you can put your pictures anywhere you like on top of this the, the um, music pages um, this could be a photo mat anywhere you like and you can also store a whole bunch of pictures in your brown paper bag or inside of your envelope these doilies have well that one on the left is a pocket this one is not um, the fabric on the right is a pocket as well as an embellishment. I mean, you can imagine how much fun this was to make. 
This page has a magnet. Also got this from the 99th. So I'm sorry that I'm being annoying. Just wanted to remind you guys. Um, you um, can put anything onto this page with that magnet. So making that Halloween tissue not permanent at all. I stenciled that little lamppost there. And that was really fun. Now this next page, my least favorite page. Because I really, I feel like... I didn't, you know, make much sense of it, but it was just kind of like spooky stuff and then just put everything together, but not my favorite page. Um, this page, I, I, I feel like these letters, like with those circles on top of the brown, they're always like so kind of creepy. There's um, the other coaster. So each signature got at least one coaster. This is like an abstract window with a, a holy t-shirt hanging and some like fabric which could be like towels, blankets, <clears throat> just to kind of give it a spooky vibe. And there you have it. And I found those like 3D butterflies in my room. <laughs> well guys, this is it. Um, I had a really, really great time. And um, part of the Halloween journal was made with my brother's sewing machine. For those of you who wanted to see certain things you can do with paper crafts. I really am loving the support. Thank you guys so much for checking out my channel and checking out this video. Please like, subscribe, comment, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.